The Story of Thickhead. Now, this is an old story, Native American story from up north in the place they now call Canada. But I think just about every family has at least one person in it that you could describe or give the name Thickhead. So there were three brothers and a mother. They lived together. The father had long since died. And even when he was alive, he wasn't that successful. The mother also didn't come from a very big or wealthy family. They had chosen bad ground, and it was far, far away whenever you had to go hunting for any game. So they grew up all the time. They were very, very poor. But the two oldest boys were fine, strong young lads. But the third boy was kind of weak and what they described as simple. Or, I don't know, he was just always into foolishness. And so the other boys called him Thickhead. And whenever they went hunting, they would always leave him behind. And all day he had to gather the water <clears throat> and gather the wood to make the fires. He was never allowed to go hunting with his two older brothers, who turned out to be fine, fine hunters. Well, the chief of this tribe had a beautiful daughter, and all the guys wanted to marry her. And so they would come around and ask the chief, but he would say, no, no, she's too young. She's not ready to be married just yet. And the men would ask, well, when she is ready, what is it that you're looking for? You know, in a, in a young man, what is it that you're going to decide? He says, well, she needs a man who is great at hunting and can bring her in a, a large bounty. And so, boy, the two older brothers, they just knew it was going to be one of them because they were some fine hunters. And so, the time came for the autumn hunt, and they were going to go out and go hunting. And Thickhead insisted this time that he be allowed to go with them to go hunting. And the boys didn't want to bring them, but the mother insisted. She said, you guys have all called him Thickhead and think he's a fool. But you watch, he will outsmart all of you. And they just laughed it off and they agreed to allow Thickhead to go with them hunting. They were sure he was going to be bad luck and would be useless on the hunt. And sure enough, they were gone three weeks. They had a very successful hunt. They captured a diversity of animals that they killed and skinned and brought back and all kinds of dried meat. And it was a beautiful trip. They saw many beautiful places. They stopped at many pretty places. And so the whole time, Thickhead never went hunting, just as they had predicted he found an earthworm that was as thick as your finger and as long almost as your arm. And he was so fascinated by this earthworm. And all he did the whole time his brothers were out hunting was play with this earthworm. So they get back and everybody is so impressed with what the brothers have done. And the brothers laughed and told their mom, you see, we told you we should not have brought Thickhead. All he brought back was this worm. And sure enough, everybody in the entire tribe heard it. 
and they all laughed and they called it a thick head hunt. A hunter had a thick head type hunt if they came back with nothing or something stupid. And so he was the humiliation of the entire tribe and all he had was this worm and Sure enough, he was out playing with the worm and he left it and a duck came and ate the worm. And Thickhead was so upset and one of the warriors said, What is wrong with you, young man? Why are you so upset? And he told him that the duck had eaten his worm and he wanted his worm back. And the hunter said, I can get you anything else but you want this duck, you can't get the worm out. He says, I can, the worm is in his belly. Bring me that duck, please. Sure enough, the hunter brought back the duck and they tied a little bell around its foot so that he could, you know, keep track of where the duck was and it wouldn't fly away or, or run away. And they tried to keep the duck in a pen, but Sure enough, a fox found that duck. He heard all that noise and commotion with the bell. And as soon as the sun went down, that fox came in and ate that duck. Boy, Thickhead saw that fox and was so mad, he hit it upside the head with a war club and killed it instantly. And there was Thickhead, and he thought, you know, I didn't do so bad. I started with a worm, and now I have a duck, and now I have a fox. So he went to bed that night, and a wolf came by, and the wolf saw that delicious-looking red fox just sitting there for him, and he started eating him. And sure enough, the brothers heard that wolf, and they beat the wolf and killed it right there after the wolf had eaten the red fox. Thickhead explained to them the story of what had happened. And they said to Thickhead, this wolf is your responsibility. You have caused this. But Thickhead thought to himself, he said, I had a worm, I had a duck, I had a fox. And now I've got a wolf. So they all went back to bed and Thickhead thought what he was going to do with that wolf. And the next day, Thickhead skinned that wolf and made a drum out of it, stretched the hide and made a very, very fine drum. It was the best drum, best sounding drum anyone had ever heard. And so sure enough, the next fall came and the chief decided that he was going to allow his daughter to be wed. And the boys all went hunting and they brought back all kinds of fine, fine food. And the chief had asked Thickhead if he could borrow his drum in order to announce the fact that his daughter was now available for marriage and he would entertain suitors. And Thickhead said to the chief, yes, you may borrow my drum, but just don't split it, he said, because it has within it the worm, the duck, the fox, and the wolf. And the chief said, no, I won't. And they had that party that night. And they invited all the eligible men who were eligible to marry them. And they didn't invite Thickhead. He was there all alone. And the next day, sure enough, he came for his drum from the chief. And the chief admitted that he had split the drum he didn't know how to play the drum. And Thickhead had so many emotions from having not been invited to the event, having lost his worm, having been humiliated by the tribe and called Thickhead. And so he was just 
so angry at the chief, and he said to the chief that you have broken my drum, which had the worm, the duck, the fox, and the wolf. And the chief felt so bad for Thickhead, and he said to him, Oh, Thickhead, I'm so sorry. What can I do to make this up to you? You can have anything. And sure enough, Thickhead thought to himself how hurt he had been the night before. And he said to the chief that I will have the hand of your daughter in replacement for the destruction of my drum. And the chief was perplexed, but he was a man of his word and a man of great honor. And so he gave his daughter to Thickhead. And the mother had proved to the boys what she had said long ago when she had predicted to them that Thickhead would end up being the wisest of them all.